What's up everyone? Welcome back to another late night, another epic. We will be watching a John Carpenter film called The Thing, the original 1982 starring Kurt Russell and all his glorious hair. And yeah, this is a film that I've seen before, maybe, I'll say maybe two, three times. But it's just one that you keep going back to. Just, it's a nostalgic trip back. It is a great thriller. Has some great prosthetics. And just very influential with its story structure. Um, with, you know, specifically with Quentin Tarantino. Reservoir Dogs, Hateful Eight. It's just a beautiful structured film. Very compact. Very tight. Well edited. Great music great cinematography it has everything going for it it's one of the 80s best films and you can put it up for debate probably one of john carpenter's best films um i i i actually also want to re-watch they live i've seen it but long time back but it's a great film uh really a lot you can get into with you know when he puts the glasses on sunglasses on and everything he sees and specifically uh, uh, Carpenter's take on advertising it's particularly um, it's it's a great directorial commentary on society but that's for another time today we'll be watching the thing I think I've watched the remake once did not did not it was good but it did not compared to the original and i don't i don't remember a lot from it to be honest but yeah we'll be watching the original one if you've seen it if you have not um glad to have you along and welcome for the ride but without any further delay we're going to get into this film because captain we are eagle so epic <laughs> you just see this spaceship falling down to earth and the thing john carpenter's the thing if i'm not mistaken i remember correctly this was the beginning as well there was a husky connection to the remake or not the remake the continuation of the the thing number two <laughs> the husky is fast enough it's in its you know uh, habitation <laughs> and you would you would wonder as a first time viewer why is he trying to shoot this poor dog checkmate <laughs> quick off the trigger. He, he gets he gets upset pretty quick. What's he doing? Circling the camp. Who is he? Said Norge or something on the side. It's Norwegian. Yep, stepping out of bounds of out of their jurisdiction and uh, technically it's a United States National in Science Institute, so they don't belong there to begin with and they can't f necessarily fire. What made? I I don't know what would make him even go for it, but that's the worst case of a grenade slipping out. And there goes all the information, all the intel as to why he's hunting the husky to begin with. Nobody. Nobody. Get a hold of somebody. Get a hold of anybody. We gotta report this mess. Look, I haven't been able to reach 
in two weeks. I doubt if anybody's talked to anybody on this entire continent, and you want me to reach somebody. First two weeks of winter. <laughs> Talk about how rough it is. Winds are gonna let up a tad next couple of hours. A tad? Can't condone it much myself, but it is a short haul. An hour there, an hour back. Doc, I'll give you the lift. No problem. Forget it, Palmer. Hey, thanks for thinking about it, though. <laughs> this is the a perfect case scenario where, you know, they, they acknowledge, you know, about the captain using his pistol or, because you would never need to use it. Everybody is sort of ho semi-hostile towards each other. You have a Norwegian group where there could be eight left. Two of them passed away. What is going on? Everything is up in the air. Talk about a great actor. <laughs> this dog is a... This dog hit all its spots perfectly. Mac! It's, it's particularly good the way they wrote it. You know, these two coming here almost as a precursor to what's going to happen in their own camp. What are you doing, Doc? Could be important work. I want to take it back with us. Well, it's getting late. Let's hurry it up. I'll check out the last few rooms. And I'm assuming the portable video unit, they probably could not extract anything from it because it seems like it's either burned or completely frozen. Is that a man in there or something? Whatever it is, they burn it up in a hurry. It almost seemed like they they also ran into the same same instance of not really trusting each other and they, they became a mad camp. Well, it's far more terrifying when you have to do an autopsy on something that doesn't even look human. And the split face is just... It's such a wonderful, uh, you know, prosthetic idea. I don't know if that was the cello, but that cello was, that stringed instrument was played at just the right time for the shot of the husky. Again, the question mark becomes bigger. <laughs> if this is normal, if all their internal organs are normal, what on earth could have caused this abomination of a human being? Ah! Clark, will you put this mutt with the others where he belongs? That was just the right jump scare if that could be considered a jump scare. Right at the right, <laughs> perfect timing. I think the dogs are professional actors. I don't know how you... There's so much... It wasn't even the score that was being used, it was just ambient wind. But that scene in itself is so tense. <laughs> that was just amazing, wasn't it? The, the head split open and then the actual face just fell off. I mean, to have such a huge, you know, prosthetic piece uh, and live animals act that genuinely are scared, that's um, filmmaking feat. Great jump scare with the huskies just leaping out <laughs> and just the tentacles, you know, and the, that very interesting foley sound. Mac wants the flamethrower. Mac wants the what? That's what he said. Now move. <laughs> the flamethrower. I think I think the, the, the moment Mac realized that there was something amiss, I, 
I like how the the wind sound blended in with the dogs and sort of the mayhem, the sound of mayhem. Oh man, poor huskies. <laughs> but again, another great scene where the sort of the dog shifting his head and still howling the like momentary husky howl. And interesting, it was just layers upon layers, like one mouth would open after another mouth, after another mouth. <laughs> He's a brave man with that scalpel, because it's petite when compared to the actual monster that he's cutting into. That's not dog. It's imitation. We got to it before it had time to finish. Finish what? Finish imitating these dogs. And that's the perfect sort of, like, sort of doubt in everyone. If we can imitate, who can we trust? No one. What the hell are you looking at me like that for? I don't know. What? I don't know. It's probably nothing. <laughs> Unless the doctor is probably thinking about quarantining him. What's that? It looks like something buried under the ice. Well, just their formation, how they're standing around the spaceship, already su looks suspect. It's at this point, they went extraterrestrial. I don't know. Thousands of years ago, it crashes, and this thing gets thrown out. Or crawls out and it ends up freezing in the ice. I just cannot believe any of this voodoo. Yeah, because it could mean, you know, how many other forms of humans or animals are they imitating? It could be everywhere. Now, how's this to wake up after thousands of years in the ice? And how can it look like a dog? I don't know how. Because it's different, I see. Because it's from outer space. What do you want from me? Ask him. That's and that's another thing John Carpenter did sort of brilliantly is, even though it's outer space, extraterrestrial, and aliens and stuff, it's a very grounded film in terms of, yeah, you know, like on Earth, a, a solid thriller. Like to me, this is a thriller first, thriller horror before it is a sci-fi film. Oh. <laughs> Carpenter, I mean, this is practically his exposition, explaining it, and uh, having the, you know, everybody say they don't, they don't know how the the cell, the cell imitation works. This works perfectly. You resort, you resort not to science, but to, to violence. Burn everybody up before anything can happen to civilized uh, areas or cities. I just want to get up to my shack and get drunk. Mac, it's important. What is it? Outside. It's 40 below outside. In the thigh call. Please, Mac. I mean, that, that framing is perfect in itself. The <laughs> Why talk to Mac and not talk to everybody, you know... As a group, you, you see these small little chatters are already starting. Everybody is divided, well, slowly getting divided. <laughs> it thought out, and the organism lives. So is Blair cracking up or what? Even at the Creedy, there is still cellular activity in these burned remains. They're not dead yet. That, that, that caught his attention. They are not dead yet. Go get the dog. <laughs> That's creepy. That's creepy. <laughs> they was gonna imitate him. Let that, let that 
Now, now they're taking Windows' word for it. You know, what if something is... Benning's now looks completely fine. And it's only until he mutates that you would question anything. My God, what was happening to him? If it had more time to finish, it would have looked and sounded and acted just like Benning's. I don't know what you're saying. That was one of those things out there, trying to imitate him, Gary. <laughs> and now that they have seen an active case of one of their comrades, it scares. You sure that's all of them? We cleaned out the storehouse, the lab, there is nothing left. Where's Blair? Or, or <laughs> Again, even that they cannot fully trust, right? Is that everything? Is the thing among them right now huddled in a group? They don't know. Blair? Blair? Concerning. Is it Blair? Is it the thing? We don't know. <laughs> but again, the fact that now the sec uh, another occurrence is happening at night, now it's still nighttime, it's not daytime, adds to the suspense. He smashed up some of the chopper pretty good. Nobody! Child, go see if he got to the tractor. Nobody gets in and out of here. Nobody! Uh, that's the madness they were talking about with the Norwegians, and it's found their camp now. Okay, Blair. Come on, man. You don't want to hurt anybody. I'll kill you! He's not talking directly to Childs. Yeah, I assume he's talking to the, to the thing. It's no holes barred. Now, now there's under, uh, you know, under the surface tension between e each person. Uh, Blair has gone kind of psycho. The dogs are dead. Trust's a tough thing to come by these days. Tell you what, why don't you just trust in the Lord? I mean, for, for the lead doctor to be saying that, I mean, that's somewhat concerning. We could take a sample of each person's blood. We could mix it with uncontaminated blood. I suppose if there's a reaction, we'd know who isn't human. We've got whole blood in storage. We need to start working on that. Keep an eye on Clark. Get close to that dog. I mean, imagine, imagine your specific case, your own blood as Caesar reaction. The last thing you would want to do is... You know, convince yourself you're not this thing. Somebody opened it, closed it, and then locked it. Great. Well, who's got access to it? I guess I'm the only one. God. <laughs> Who could have done it? Who did it? it? Puts the doctor in a hot seat. That key ring of yours is always hooked to your belt. Well, it's not about I'm accusing everybody. Hey, you stop it! Not any word of Chopper's the only one who's got any business with it. Ah, oh, now wait a minute, Gary. You've been in here on several occasions. Doc thought of the test. So what? Is that supposed to clear him? Well, why? Why would he come Shut in here and take a test? No, we no. And <laughs> they're all slowly going, going psycho until until they can, well fully can't trust each other to the point of wanting to hurt one another or kill one another. Put it down, Gary. You don't want to hurt anybody. Right. On the floor. Well, if anybody should be stripped of their gun, it should be Gary. If it takes us over, then it has no more enemies. Nobody left to kill it. And then it's one. Well, that will just be his perfect form if everybody's converted into a thing. Norris, you and Childs, shoot him up with morphine. Tie him down in the rec room and watch him. Fuchs, you start working on a new test. I need Doc's help. Yeah, you don't want to drug me. Mac, I'm not a prisoner! This is when loyalty, friendship, and trust go completely outside of the, the realm. Oh, because they are, they all have to be equally tested and whoever denies wanting to be tested, suspect. If none of us make it, at least there'll be some kind of record. The storm's been hitting us hard now for 48 hours. We still have nothing to go on. He looks like, they all look like they have had no sleep. Well, they can't really have it and there's sort of the recording of it all 
Yeah, again, echoes somewhat the uh, Nor Norwegians. If a small particle of this thing is enough to take over an entire organism, then everyone should prepare their own meals. And I suggest we only eat out of cans. All right. Even McCready, uh, for a second, he looks so sort of robotic and pale. an effective jump scare that was. Well, there we go. <laughs> McCready's outfit. Windows, you come with us. Norris, you stay here. Any of them move, you fry them. You hear anything, anything at all, you cut loose on the sirens. We all meet back here in 20 minutes regardless. And everybody watch whoever you're with. Real close. How can you how can you even attempt to get a job done when you can't? Well, we, it's more more about self interest now, like ma making sure you you you. I mean, you deal with this entire thing, make sure you get to the end of the testing, and then move on from there. I'm not gonna harm anybody, and there's nothing wrong with me. And if there was, I'm all better now. I'd like to come back inside. Now you got my promise. We'll see. We'll see. The fact that he ha that he, that he has a noose itself is already concerning. Maybe he burned himself before it could get to him. No, uh, people are just missing. People are burning. People are dying. <laughs> They're falling out like flies. been out there 40 45 minutes enough reason to worry <laughs> as the thing got into them hey all of you come here come ah. not a good sign at all <laughs> like the, how, how did he get it mccready he's one of them when do you think it got to him i don't know in any time uh, or it could be planted why are you so just to let him in here. Because they're so close. It's maybe our best chance to blow it away. No. Just let him freeze to death outside. Child, what if we're wrong about him? Why then we're wrong? And that's that's the moral dilemma, right? What if what if he is still human? Uh, is it worth the collateral damage to to be wrong? Come on, child, burn me. Put those torches on the floor and back off. <laughs> that's that's one way to combat a threat. Back off. Way off. So every man for himself, you have to plead your case. How you are not this thing. God, breathe it! One time to talk. Get him in here. And bring the others. Now nobody gets out of my sight. Well, that's one. That's one way to go about it. Is nobody go out of anybody's sight, and everybody have sort of a weapon for themselves. I'm a real light sleeper, child. Anyone tries to wake me. Here. I mean, at this point, <laughs> it feels like it's a ticking time bomb for everyone. Clear. Clear. That's just amazing. Very reminiscent, obviously, of Alien. Well, somewhat. Somewhat reminiscent. I mean, that's just Oscar-worthy prosthetics right there. Look at all of that. Wait till it see has no head. I mean, it, uh, the thing just escapes in time. It's trying to hide. You gotta be <laughs> kidding. Oh my goodness, his head. His head is a spider. 
You and Palmer tie everybody down real tight. What for? For your health. Come on, let's rush him. He's not gonna blow us all up. Uh, can you really trust McCready at this point? Nobody can, again, nobody can trust anyone. He ain't tying me up. Then I'll have to kill you, child. Then kill me. I mean, at this point, how can you even tell what if, if what McCready is doing is for his good, right? My blood from one of you things won't obey when it's attacked. It'll try and survive. Crawl away from a hot needle, say. God, oh, ju just that small little cut puts a puts a knot in the stomach. That's good. All right, move back. Over there. I mean, you can imagine what a what a relief it would be when you know you find out you're not the thing and then you could sort of join the good side well the side with the weapon I guess you're okay all right put that on and watch them Charles is not liking this experimentation I mean you could see it through his eyes his patience is running thin Now, Clark. Uh, what would really eat him up is if he actually killed a normal human being. This is pure nonsense. Doesn't prove a thing. I thought you'd feel that way, Gary. You were the only one that could have got to that blood. We'll do you last. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> the testing, the testing works. Gary, Gary and uh, Childs probably are. <laughs> they're, they're probably is so freaky for them. Boy, it treated Windows like a rag doll. Perfect, blood smithereens. I think up to a certain point, I did not hear any of Morcone's score. Well, if if it's if it was there, it's probably very subtle. But sort of the terror and the horror, it's a soundtrack in itself. I right, the copper testing is judge, jury, and executioner at this point. Get me out of here. Cut me loose! Cut me the hell! Come on! Get yeah, exactly. You don't want to be next to Gary. He's the last one. And when you find the time, I'd rather not spend the rest of this winter tied to this couch! Well, at this point, they can all move on. And he didn't use the noose, so that's a that's a, that's not good. There you go. He's well. He's a doctor. He's smart. What is it? Something he's been making. It's a ship of some kind. Well, begs the question: How long was he here that he was able to build a ship? Where was he trying to go? Any place but here. Smart decision to have it as a first person perspective, but you can imagine when they all come back to Childs, you know, Childs would, it, it would be in his right to, you know, ask them, do the copper testing again. Six hours, it'll be a hundred below in here. Well, that's suicide. Not for that thing. He wants to freeze now. He's got no way out of here. He just wants to go to sleep in the cold until the rescue team finds it. Well, that, yeah. That's what. That's one way. If it cannot hide, freeze itself so until the next, you know, Nobel Peace Prize uh, candidate, you know, lets it thaw out. Oh, 
Well, yeah, at this point, they're, they're, they're going gongzo. All right. We gotta bring this whole place right down into the ice. Gary, plant yours in the old storage room. Now it's down by the generator. There is. Again, if, when, Chi, when Childs is out there, I mean, he, he could be anywhere, and two Childs, you know, sort of defense. Yeah, he, yeah, he doesn't know if the, them three are the thing as well. And if I'm not mistaken, if I remember correctly, Childs, Childs makes it out at the end. Oh, that was <laughs> such a good, such a good uh, jump scare. Subtle, but it's a good jump scare. It's sort of to go back to, you know, McCready's point, you cannot let anybody go out of your sight, even for a second, because the thing could just move that quickly. Well, at this point, you know, you don't blame McCready. He, he, he cannot trust anybody but himself. What a mother load, what a combination. Wonderful live explosion. I mean, they're out in Antarctica, so as a production, you know, in the middle of nowhere, in, in snow, yeah, why not just blow something up? Kudos to uh, John Carpenter. You the only one who made it? Not the only one. Yeah, <laughs> suspect. Why are you both the only one that made it? Won't last long, though. Neither will we. How will we make it? Maybe we should. Ah, <laughs> the, uh, more, more like the Norwegian, you know, sort of detonating themselves. Quite something. I mean, that definitely something to laugh about. And who knows what their initial, their their initial intent of Antarctica was? Well, like they, they didn't even didn't even scratch it. Probably. Brilliant. An open ending. Thoughts. Thoughts on this. Wonderful, wonderful, somewhat a perfect film, if not a perfect film. It it starts out as a, as a head scratcher, but then slowly into it, you're just watching this group of men. And, and ones that have sort of built up a friendship, 10 years with... Um, Gary and the the other the other person you know they're just sort of grown you know have this manly relationship with one another and it, within few within a few days that 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 trust just completely breaks everybody sort of goes out of their mind uh, the fact that it's in the middle of Antarctica you know it even adds to the whole you know isolated you know sort of m maniacal not, not not well like stir crazy environment um very much like uh, reservoir dogs or even more the hateful eight like you know quentin tarantino talking about reservoir dogs being an inspiration what more the thing like you have ennio morcone you have the the lodge um um uh, haberdashery the sorry the haberdashery mary's mary's haberdashery um and then you have the the snow the blizzard you have kurt Russell. you have so many elements that are sort of paying homage to the thing and it's, it's again once you think about it it's such a brilliant story structure that you know this thing imitates others 
and you know within its own right you know uh, besides some of the uh, wonderful shots that John Carpenter treats us to to these prosthetics it can really it, it, some of it can even work without it like you think about just the dog the dog in itself if he just wanted to have the dog as the the main showpiece and then eventually sort of have like Blair uh, with his own fingers stretching Gary's face you know even that that in its subtlety sort of um, adds to it so sort of robotic nature of it all when when um, McCready uh, you know just before he you know came in uh, he was talking to the doctor and then eventually they found McCready's you know clothing outside and sort of the robotic nature and this plain pale look already sort of signifies that something is wrong the, you know, this either superhuman strength or or the willingness to hide or to move fast in the darkness. You are probably a thing. And it works really well. It, uh, this film really shines when it's nighttime. <coughs> because, you know, even with the nighttime photography and with, uh, like, not needing to overly stylize it, uh, it works so much in its favor. Kurt Russell is such a, <laughs> a likable character, even though you know he murders uh, Clark. And but again, it's 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 sort it's self defense, shall we call it? But the thing is is pretty much a perfect film, and it's it's always a treat to come back to it because I mean it's I don't know it's it's great it's great like it just makes you smile and appreciate cinema for what it is you know with the I mean this being shot on film and I'm not so sure of the aspect ratio but the aspect ratio in itself is I mean it gives it such so much space to breathe within such a confined um, claustrophobic space um, and uh, the flamethrower that you know you, you sort of don't you don't you don't you don't feel bad when you are burning your friend of 10 years you just have to do it to survive uh, the, and you're always constantly watching your back um, but the, uh, that's sort of the brilliance of John Carpenter he can work with very little talk about the fog you know, there's certain shots in this where, uh, because they're in Antarctica, he gets to play with a lot of, you know, frost and smoke and, you know, all the elemental um, uh, pieces uh, that sort of make it extremely photographic and um, um, uh, something for Dean Cundy to really play with. Uh, so th th this film is great. It sort of transcends its, its era. It transcends it. It's there's almost nothing that dates this film besides the let's say the chess the chess wizard, um, but yeah, really good uh, piece of filmmaking. Really miss it, um, and hopefully John Carpenter continues to make films. Uh, but yeah, this was this is a brilliant piece of cinema. Really like it, and I'm pretty sure I'll, I'll just keep smiling as I'm editing this and find some things to say about it. But yeah. Until then, until the next picture, stay safe. Um, keep your eye on everyone. You never know uh, who might who, who might be the thing. If the thing is walking out, you know, out out and about. Who knows? You know, who knows? Like McCready uh, or uh, Childs could have been the thing. If, if they freeze, and then eventually, if somebody sees their thawed body, uh, uh, well, sees their body, takes it into an autopsy, and lets it thaw. You know, that could be a way of uh, transference. So you never 100% know by the end of this whether this thing lives. Uh, so and it's a great open or like uh, open open endings and sort of even even the brilliance with the dog sort of the innocence of the dog you know you know and sort of the Norwegians sort of you can imagine by the end of by the end of the Norwegians uh, by the end of this film you understand why the Norwegians were so maniacal and so like crazy about killing that specific dog because it probably tested out its blood um, so at, at, at some point you know they, it almost paralleled because yeah, uh, Charles, Charles or McCready was not trusting anyone so it's it's brilliant piece of filmmaking 
and it should have just stayed uh, you know this film works as a solo film it just works it does not even need a sequel and that's how brilliant it is but yeah I've talked I've probably talked enough about this film I'm interested to to read what you guys have to write about it um, if there's any tidbits anything I got wrong uh, please do write it in the comments I read it and until the next film take care guys and enjoy cinema what's up you cinephiles thank you very much for making it to the very end me and big willy don't take that for granted we really appreciate you now if you'd like to show your support to us you know what you can do up here you can smash that button really just smash it and you know if you would like to check out some more content they're all curated by days up over here and playlists so you know what we hope you're having a great day don't crumble and just continue to smile and be a good bastion of cinema.